talking with, with Paul Borden. He's uh, Vice President of Southern Automotive Media Association and Chairman of Topless in Miami, which uh, celebrated its fifth edition yesterday. How are you, Paul? Doing fine, Javier. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. Uh, once again, I'm really sorry I couldn't make it this year. But from what I've seen and heard on, and I've seen on social media, all the postings, it was a great event. Well, first of all, yes, we did miss you because I know that you've given us a great coverage in the past with your videos. And uh, I think it was uh, the reception the manufacturers seemed to like like the event. I thought we had a good turnout uh, of, of uh, members to host it, saying we had a full room for the awards dinner last night. And I thought we had a good selection of winners this year. That's great. So five years, a lot of hard work has gone into this, and it's getting a lot of recognition around the country. And I've been seeing, again, the results, and some of the manufacturers are really happy to be awarded uh, a prize in this uh, Topless in Miami contest. So that's great. So congratulations on that. So how many cars and manufacturers were represented yesterday there? We had 17 cars from 14 different manufacturers. We had uh, uh, two Mercedes, two Volkswagens, two BMW uh, models entered in, so that made up for the uh, extra three vehicles there. We were missing a couple that we traditionally had, but I thought that uh, we also picked up a couple new ones. Maserati was there. Maserati, of course, won one of the categories, and Rolls-Royce was also a, a new entrant for us. Yeah, I saw the Rolls-Royce Phantom drop that coupe, which is like a fantastic vehicle. I mean, I had a chance to drive it once shortly, <laughs> unfortunately, but that's a great car. So that car won on the super luxury exotic car because it was the only entry. But if there has been any others, maybe you have one anyways, right? Uh, I'm sorry, I missed the last. I'm saying like if, if there were any other entries, probably would have won anyway because it's such a great car. Yes, it was. Uh, I mean, if you want to say something that was in a class by itself, it literally was in a class by itself. You know, we have to take into consideration uh, a little bit of, of what of the price range of the vehicles. I think in the past we've had some vehicles that would have competed, and I think this year, for example, we had the Mercedes Benz had the SL there, but it was the SL 400, which is. Uh, no, I don't want to say it's an inexpensive vehicle by any means because it's not. It's over $100,000, but it's still, when you're talking $100,000 compared to $450,000, it's, it's quite a bit of difference there. Yeah, you can buy four of them with the price of the Rolls <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, you know, I think last year we had a Bentley. Bentley won the Super Luxury class last year, and uh, I think it would have been nice if we could have had, but their schedule this year simply didn't permit it. That's what we've run into with a couple other people. They had a different events and, and couldn't get the vehicle that they wanted down to us, but we're happy with the 17 that we had. And I sound like, as I say, I thought our list of winners was pretty impressive. Yeah, so let's go from the the, the main winner of the, the main category, which is overall, right? It competes in its own category, but it also won overall. The Porsche 911 Carrera Forest Cabriolet? The, oh no, uh, that was uh, one last year. Right? That, 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 yeah, that won the, that won the cap. Uh, that this year, this year it was the Boxster, the top Boxster lineup, and it was uh, pretty much an overwhelming choice. The way we worked it, as you probably are aware, um, the members uh, rate the cars in each category, and the one who got the uh, we take the first car that got the most first place votes, and it was the Boxster. It was very close with the. Um, the uh, E400 from Mercedes-Benz, as well as that goes, and actually the uh, little uh, Mazda Miata uh, X, uh, X5 also got a, a lot of first place votes. So those were the uh, three, three. those were category winners, and they also were competing for the overall prize. That's great. So the Boxer was competing against the, Chevy, uh, the Corvette, the Stingray, the Mustang, uh, the Nissan 370C uh, for the performance convertible competition. So obviously the Boxer won that too, right? That's correct. Uh, you know, the, as you probably re recall, the first couple of years there, three years, we had a separate winner as convertible of the year. And, and finally, I guess you could say we came to our senses and said, wait a minute, if it's a convertible of the year, why doesn't it win on its own class? <laughs> so yeah. uh, <laughs> so we, this year, we uh, last year actually was the first year we, we said, okay, let's have a class winner. Uh, you have to win your class, and then you can be convertible of the year. That's great. So then you mentioned before the Maserati Gran Turismo convertible and the luxury class, and that uh, the competition was tough there. The Mercedes-Benz Sell 400 and the BMW 600 
50i, which are fabulous cars too, but the Maserati has its own appeal to it, and I guess like being there for the first time, maybe that's what caught up attention. Uh, it, it could have played, uh, uh, you know, but I'll tell you, it, it, it is a, a fine vehicle. As you probably well know, it was again, up against, uh, let's see, the Mercedes-Benz SL400 and... Oh, gosh. The BMW 650, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, BM, yeah, the BMW 650i, which was uh, a late replacement. The BMW had committed to the M4, and then about a week ago, they said, well, we'd rather send you the 650i. We saw no problem with that, no problem with that. <laughs> yeah, no problem upgrading there, right? No, no. And it's, it's I, I tell you, the way cars are today, these days, it's really uh, the, the, the differences that... that are so minute and, and, and the competition is so close. I just, uh, I really think that the manufacturers over the last, well, you've covered it for a long time, I would say for the last 15 years or so, have really started stepping up their, their production, their quality, their, their features that they offer in vehicles. It's amazing all, all the different uh, features that you can find in vehicles today that you couldn't say even as recently as 10 years ago. Yeah, I I, used to, I I say now that there aren't any bad cars anymore in the market. It's just a matter of price and pre preference. But really, everybody's doing like a great job with, with every single car. So the other category was the full-size uh, convertible, and you mentioned the E-Class one, which is also a great car from Mercedes-Benz. That one was really a popular choice, too, uh, and it is incredible. It's interesting to see, by the way, that you, know, you mentioned the E-Class. Can you imagine the E-Class convertible in the past at all? Oh, no. <laughs> I think manufacturers are beginning to see the potential in that particular segment. You know, a long time ago, convertibles were very popular. And then in the, I want to say, what, the mid-90s to uh, mid-80s to through the 90s, they sort of started dying out a little bit. But now you see them having kind of a little comeback. Yeah, I think there were some issues with safety, and some people weren't really looking into buying a convertible because of that. But now, safety technology is amazing in either a convertible or like a regular car, so that's great to see. So the E-Class was competing against the Infiniti Q60, IPL, the BMW 228i, the Lexus IS350, and the Volkswagen EOS Final Edition. Maybe you should have got an award for, a special award for the EOS uh, as a goodbye thing to it, no? Yes, uh, yeah, I happened to, uh, uh, I drove, that was one of the cars that I drove is, and really was kind of impressed, and I thought, well, this is a shame, but, you know, it's kind of difficult to come up with some of the different classes sometimes. Well, how is this going in against an E-Class? Well, uh, it is a four-passenger vehicle. It's not a performance vehicle. It's not a small, small uh, convertible, so, and it's not really a luxury convertible. But it is, I'll tell you, if you're looking for a convertible at a good price that has good features and good quality, uh, it'd be hard to turn that one down. Yeah, and now since it's in the last edition, so it'll be a collector's item, sort of, uh, I guess. So yeah, there good, you go. A good car to have. So finally, in the small convertible class, the Mazda, as you mentioned, the Mazda MX-65, which I believe it's the first award ever for this car that it has not gone into sell yet. I mean, Mazda was kind enough to send it there, so it's a great story now. I heard some big news for Mazda here with Topless in Miami. We were we were very fortunate that Mazda was able to get us the, the 2016 model, and you are correct, uh, Tamara Melinchuk who handles the media for uh, Mazda, or for East Coast Mazda, said that uh, this is the first award, and she was letting her people know about it real quick, that uh, it's, the car will go on sale. Let's see. It will be a press plates the last quarter of the year, or actually, wait a minute, Actually, it'll be in the, uh, later this summer. It'll be in press plates, and it'll go on sale the last quarter, I believe it is, for 2016. Yeah, that's, that's great. So the Mazda went against, went against the, the Volkswagen Beetle R-Line, the Fiat 500C, which, uh, by the way, I have won like three or four times, I think, in this category, and the Jeep Renegade. So great news for Mazda there. Various models, of, you know, that's kind of a streaky category. The Fiat, one of the first three years, the Mazda... 2015 Mazda broke Fiat string last year, and now Mazda starting a string of its own. <laughs> well, we'll see next year what happens there. So uh, this year, uh, and I believe it's the second year that the Hearts Corporation, which is a manufacturer of most of the soft tops for a lot of the convertibles that are in the market, was the, the sponsor of the event, right? So can you tell us a little Hearts, bit more Hearts, about Hearts Corporation? Hearts stepped up. Hearts 
stepped up, you know, they're the leading, as you say, the leading manufacturers of convertible uh, soft tops in the world. And uh, they have been, this is the third year they've been with us. They've been one of the, they've been a sponsor. And this year they, they wanted to, they have really stepped up. They thought they, that the event was very worthwhile and fit in there in, in what they try to do as far as with the public. And so they wanted to become a title sponsor. And uh, that's exactly what happened. And um, they really uh, did step up with us and, and uh, help us out financially. There, this is uh, having an event like this can uh, be uh, run quite expensive. I know. And uh, it was a big help having them here. They, they had three people here this year. They uh, gave us information on their company. Uh, company. They were there for interviews and uh, had quite detailed information on the various tops of the cars. And I would tell you, so that's an amazing thing. I don't know. Uh, you know, I had a convertible a long time ago, back in the 60s, and I can remember coming out after a heavy snowstorm, and there was as much snow inside my car as there was <laughs> outside the car. Yeah. And you just don't get that these days. These things, if, when you put that top up, it's like driving a regular coupe, hard top silence, and, you know, yeah. no, no leaks or anything. The again, quality of the tops is amazing. Yeah. Again, amazing technology in your car. So, Paul, we run out of time here, so thank you very much again for your time. Congratulations on the hard work. Uh, the fifth edition of Topless in Miami, and I'm gonna make sure that next th next year I'm gonna arrange my schedule so I'll be able to be there and share with you. Okay? I hope so. I thought maybe we can get you an earlier date so you can plan your schedule better. Appreciate it. Thank Appreciate you your time. Thank you very much, Paul, and see you next time back in Miami. Thank you. Stay good. Bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.